Item Number SCP-3668 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-3668 is to be kept within a display case at Foundation Command-02 due to the site's location in Washington, D.C. SCP-3668 is currently being used as a part of Potomac Briefings. Footnote 1 Potomac briefings are given by Foundation agents to new inaugurated United States politicians, covering the existence of the Anomalous and the Foundation. These briefings typically overstate the danger posed by anomalies within containment, in order to enhance cooperation between the United States government and the Foundation. During Potomac briefings, SCP-3668 is to be removed from containment, and the agent leading the briefing is to explain the anomalous properties and history of SCP-3668. To demonstrate the anomalous properties of SCP-3668, a secondary agent is to wield SCP-3668 while the leading agent repeatedly fires a handgun at the secondary agent's head. Description: SCP-3668 is a Yetholm-type shield. Footnote 2. A Yetholm-type shield is a distinctive type of shield originating from approximately 1200 to 800 BCE, primarily originating from Britain and Ireland. SCP-3668 is apparently indestructible, being completely resistant to physical damage and showing no signs of wear. When a living human wields SCP-3668, henceforth referred to as the Wielder, and is threatened, semi-corporeal humanoids, henceforth referred to as SCP-3668-1, manifest between the source of danger and the Wielder. The number of SCP-3668-1 instances is variable, depending on the nature of the threat, with the highest recorded number being 20. Each SCP-3668-1 is armed with a shield identical to SCP-3668, and are dressed in armor matching Pictish designs of 1200 to 800 BCE. Wielders are able to identify some SCP-3668-1 as being visually reminiscent of their recently deceased ancestors. Footnote 3 Typically, wielders are able to identify SCP-3668-1 instances as parents or grandparents. Individuals with notable genealogies have been able to identify SCP-3668-1 instances as earlier ancestors. The unidentified instances are believed to represent older ancestors. SCP-3668-1 entities have been recorded to include both biological and adoptive ancestors. Ancestors that were soldiers or warriors appear more frequently among SCP-3668-1 instances. SCP-3668-1 instances are unable to verbally communicate. After SCP-3668-1 instances manifest, they will begin to defend the wielder against physical harm. All SCP-3668-1 instances display the same indestructible properties as SCP-3668. Should danger to the wielder be lasting or more substantial, SCP-3668-1 instances will attempt to help the wielder escape from danger. Once the wielder is safe, the SCP-3668-1 instances will perform a congratulatory gesture towards the wielder before demanifesting. Examples of these gestures include hugging the wielder, kissing the wielder on the forehead, and saluting the wielder. On the back of SCP-3668 is an inscription in unidentified runic characters. The Estate Noir, a Foundation precursor organization that possessed SCP-3668, utilized anomalous means to create a translation of this inscription. Translated from the French produced by the Estate Noir into English, this transcription reads, Let the love of your ancestors be your shield. Addendum, Provenance of SCP-3668 Evidence indicates that SCP-3668 is approximately 3,000 years old, although the anomalous properties of the item prevent any proper method of dating the object. SCP-3668, or an object of identical description, has been contained and utilized by several groups over the past 3,000 years. 
As complete of a history of SCP-3668 as can be assembled follows below. This timeline is not complete, as there are several gaps in the historical record where the location of SCP-3668 is unknown. Some of these gaps are believed to be the result of past anomalous containment groups obfuscating the existence of SCP-3668. Origin, circa 1200 BCE to 800 BCE. The exact date of origin of SCP-3668 is currently unknown, but estimates have been made given the style of the object, which was present in shields created between 1200 BCE and 800 BCE. SCP-3668 does not appear within the historical record until 325 BCE. It is currently unknown how or by whom SCP-3668 was created. The aforementioned period does not coincide with a period of known anomalous activity within Scotland. As such, it is believed that SCP-3668 is a unique anomalous item, rather than being part of a greater series. Yethon type shields were typically used by individuals of a high social standing. The anomalous alterations to SCP-3668 further indicate this, as such modifications would have likely been difficult to produce. Scotland, 325 BCE. The first appearance of SCP-3668 in the historical record appears in 325 BCE, when it is briefly mentioned in a historical account by the Greek geographer Pythias of Massalia in his work Things Concerning the Ocean. This work describes a journey by Pythias to northwestern Europe, including Scotland. No complete copy of this text survives, but the relevant excerpt was recorded by the Praetorian Office of Secret Wisdom. Footnote 5. The Praetorian Office of Secret Wisdom was a division of the Praetorian Guard dedicated to the containment and or destruction of anomalous creatures and objects that were a threat or inconvenience to the Roman Empire. Translated from Latin. Footnote 6. Things Concerning the Ocean was originally written in Ancient Greek. However, the excerpt preserved by the Praetorian Office was a translation of the original Greek into Latin. We landed upon the shore and met with the natives of this region of Bretonike. One of their warriors carried an ornate shield with a design of circles. Holding this shield, he is deathless, for the ghosts of his fathers would appear before him to defend him. Legio 20 Valeria Victrix, 78 AD to 85 AD. During the Roman invasion of Scotland, SCP-3668 came into the possession of Legio 20 Valeria Victrix. SCP-3668 was located in a Pictish village and used by one warrior during an attempt to defend the village. While the wielder of SCP-3668 was not killed, many of the other defenders were, and the warrior surrendered. Legio 20 then took SCP-3668 into their possession. SCP-3668 was held by Legio 20 and infrequently used in combat until the end of Gnaeus Julius Agricola's campaign against Northern England. At the end of the campaign, it was taken into the custody of Agricola himself. Praetorian Office of Secret Wisdom, 85 AD to 312 AD. In the year 85 AD, Agricola was recalled to Rome from Britain. It is believed that he brought SCP-3668 with him and presented the item as a gift to Emperor Domitian on his return. This is unconfirmed, but is believed to be the most likely location of SCP-3668 during this time period by the historical department. Regardless of the circumstances under which SCP-3668 came to Rome, it was given into the custody of the Praetorian Office of Secret Wisdom. The Praetorian Office then began efforts to investigate the history of SCP-3668, discovering the mention in things concerning the ocean, which was not lost at the time. The Praetorian Office held on to SCP-3668 until the Praetorian Guard was disbanded in the year 312. During this period, there were several concerted efforts to test the properties of the anomaly. SCP-3668 was considered for usage to defend the Emperor, but this was denied for unknown reasons. It was recorded that SCP-3668 was taken by a former Praetorian Guard, but what they did with it is unclear. 
Vatican Holy Office for Secrets and Prophecies, 807 to 1808. The Vatican Holy Office for Secrets and Prophecies came into the possession of SCP-3668 at some point before 807. The exact circumstances under which this occurred are unknown. Footnote 7. The Vatican Holy Office for Secrets and Prophecies was a group dedicated to the concealment of the anomalous under the supervision of the Catholic Church. It later merged with the Foundation in 1964, having previously been opposed to the Royal Office for Christian Artifacts, a Protestant organization and precursor to the Foundation. The Vatican Holy Office made a concerted effort to learn more about SCP-3668, discovering the records of the Praetorian Office in the process. Unlike the Praetorian Office, the Vatican Holy Office declared SCP-3668 unholy and opted against any military usage. Unknown, 1096 to 1104. In 1096, the records of the Vatican Holy Office indicate that SCP-3668 was not within the Vatican Secret Archive in 1096. These records only note the absence of SCP-3668, and do not explain where it was. In 1104, records indicate that SCP-3668 was returned to the Vatican Secret Archive. Again, records do not indicate where SCP-3668 was during this period. It is possible that SCP-3668 was taken earlier than 1096, or returned earlier than 1104. Napoleon 1808 to 1814. When Rome was annexed into the First French Empire as a department, SCP-3668 was taken by French Imperial forces from the Vatican Secret Archive. After learning of the anomalous effects of SCP-3668, it was then brought before Napoleon as a gift. Napoleon began to use the item due to a personal interest in his lineage. However, he mostly regarded SCP-3668 as a novelty, rather than as a weapon or military tool. As such, it was not brought into battle at any time during Napoleon's possession of the item. While not being used, it was kept with Napoleon's small personal collection of anomalous items. Estate Noir, 1814-1900 Following Napoleon's exile to Elba, his personal collection of anomalous objects was confiscated by the Estate Noir, a Foundation precursor agency operating out of France. Among the objects within Napoleon's collection was SCP-3668. The Estate Noir militarized SCP-3668, using it during the Fourth Occult War. The Estate Noir is known to have conducted efforts to obscure Napoleon's personal involvement with the Anomalous. Information concerning SCP-3668 was likely destroyed as a result of this. Around 1852, Her Majesty's Foundation for the Study of Curiosities and Phantasmagoria learned of the existence of SCP-3668 and that it was being held by the Estate Noir. They decided that the artifact, being originally from Scotland and dealing with genetic heritage, should fall under their jurisdiction, and requested that the Estate Noir give the object over to their custody. The Estate Noir refused this demand, forming a point of contention between the two groups which lasted for the next 48 years. Her Majesty's Foundation for the Study of Curiosities in Phantasmagoria made multiple requests for the return of SCP-3668, but all were denied. Foundation, 1900-1924 Following the Forbidden City Convention, the Estate Noir, Her Majesty's Foundation for the Study of Curiosities in Phantasmagoria, and eleven other anomalous containment groups merged to form the modern SCP Foundation. However, partisan elements from the Estate Noir, opposed to the merger and the establishment of the modern Foundation, destroyed many records of the Estate Noir. Among these were the files concerning SCP-3668. As such, the archives of the Vatican Holy Office are the primary source of information on SCP-3668. Chaos Insurgency, 1924-1945 to 
During the Foundation's civil war, which led to the formation of the first Chaos Insurgency, SCP-3668 was claimed by individuals that would later form the Insurgency, along with many other anomalous objects with a militarization possibility. Over the course of the next 20 years, there were scattered reports of First Chaos Insurgency operatives using SCP-3668 during battle. While the Foundation remained aware of SCP-3668, recontainment of SCP-3668 was never considered a high priority, due to the low danger and threat to normalcy of the anomaly. Notably, during a Foundation assault on an insurgency cell in 1938, a Chaos insurgent wielding SCP-3668 was directly targeted with a Foundation-grade rocket artillery unit and survived unharmed. The Chaos insurgent in question was then carried away by SCP-3668-1 instances and escaped custody. This is currently the known upper limit of the abilities of SCP-3668. Marshall, Carter, and Dark, 1945 to 1946. At the end of the Seventh Occult War, the first Chaos Insurgency was defeated by the Foundation and Allied Occult Coalition forces. Many of their anomalous objects were confiscated or destroyed at this time. However, a former member of the first Chaos Insurgency eluded custody and sold SCP-3668 to Ottaviano de Medici, a Marshall Carter and Dark sales representative and auctioneer. According to Ottaviano de Medici, who was later apprehended for unrelated reasons, Marshall Carter and Dark sold SCP-3668 to Normand Ivories, a private collector of anomalous items, for approximately 15,000 US dollars. Mr. Medici did not learn what Mr. Ivories intended to use SCP-3668 for. Office for Reclamation of Islamic Artifacts, 1982 to 1991. In 1982, the ORIA took Esma il Kashani into custody for terrorism against the state. SCP-3668 was in the possession of Eshmael Kashani at the time and placed into ORIA custody afterward. The location of SCP-3668 between 1946 and 1982 is currently unknown. Unfortunately, Norman Ivories died in 1976, and Esmail Kashani was executed by the ORIA three months after being taken into custody. In 1991, SCP-3668 was offered to the Foundation by the ORIA as part of an exchange of anomalous objects. The ORIA indicated knowledge of the history of the object, and knowledge that the Foundation would be interested in the object. This deal was accepted, and SCP-3668 has been in Foundation containment ever since. Foundation, 1991 to present. SCP-3668, after being returned to Foundation custody, was placed into a standard safe class object locker at site. In 1995, however, a standard routine of Foundation objects indicated that it would prove useful as a demonstrative SCP for Potomac briefings. The anomalous properties of SCP-3668 are non-dangerous and actively prevent potential harm. This minimizes any risk posed when displaying the object. SCP-3668 can easily be activated, caused by any threat posed to the wielder. This allows for briefings to quickly and efficiently display an anomaly. When not in use, SCP-3668 is completely inert. The extended history of SCP-3668 and the lack of any unexpected incidents allows a high degree of confidence that SCP-3668 does not possess any additional, secondary anomalous properties. The provenance of SCP-3668, particularly past owners such as Napoleon, allow an agent to establish the widespread nature of the anomalous while still being truthful. As such, SCP-3668 is an ideal object for usage in Potomac briefings. In a 9-3-1 vote, the O5 Council voted to use SCP-3668 as such, rather than a more traditional containment profile. Thank you guys so much for watching, and a huge thank you to all of my patrons on Patreon. Special shout out to my level 4 patrons, Alexis Zagrate, Ryan, Lesbifriends, and Scrubversive. 
If you would like to see your name at the end of my videos, see my videos early, and get some other cool perks, head on over to patreon.com slash drmaxwell, link in the description.